the host for this show, and I have a very special guest. Give it up for Just Cam. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even notice how to move. I got to think about my next move. So when I step outside, I put on the shoes. <laughs> I'm stepping through life and it's a trouble. Look, can't give up, I got to hustle. Uh, I'm in my head, it feel like a bubble. I got to listen to the songs, that's the soul for sure. Headphones, what I listen to, the black out the haters. They want to talk, but I don't listen to commentators. Money. They in the bleachers, they want to talk like spectators. The money, I got the green, I need Thank some you. more. We all gotta talk about what's on the floor, but I'm humble, I don't never put my money on the floor. I keep that in my pocket and put it up for some more. Some batteries, I'm real charged up. They wanna talk about my name, but I still ain't giving up. They really out here talking down, but I'm still working up. And I don't really talk tough, but I still know I'm tough. Day but job. Day job, I got a day job for sure. Like you said, get the money and Get out the way for sure. <laughs> I don't know. Day job, I gotta get that pay. When you grow up, you gotta pay them bills. Make sure Ice. they late. Ice, I gotta get some diamonds. Are you talking about what's in the cup? Double cup, I don't know. What's enough? I don't know. I gotta I just dropped four bands on a chain last week. I gotta wait for it to come in. One day you'll see. Basketball, I gotta shoot those threes. I got shooters with me, but you don't wanna do that. Green bean. I don't wanna talk daily. I don't wanna talk long. I just want to tell y'all how I feel on this song. Food. Food, I'm hungry. I always got to eat up. What's on my plate, I can't get me enough. And if you want it one day, you got to keep shining too. You want some more food, then you got to go do what you do. First place. First place, first place. That's always what I wanted. But second place, not bad because you always going to be hunting. I don't really know what's next about this. But first place, that's the thing that's on my top list. I'm still grinding, I'm still humble, and I'm still trying to get there. First place sound good, but I ain't always gonna sit there. The last like, one. I don't even know what to say. Last week I was in the basement, but let's talk about today. I really came a long way, I'm really coming, still coming. I think I'm still walking, but I feel like running. This life is crazy, it's always in my face. But one thing you can't do is let nobody hit you. We are back. This is the Life of X Athlete. Um, this is the Couch Talk. This is the King Teeth Network. Um, this is everything in one. Uh, this is something that I have been waiting for. I have my guy Jess Cam in the building, Absolutely. athlete, artist. Um, he has an incredible story, something that I think will touch the youth for years to come for sure. Yeah. Straight out of Akron, yeah. straight yeah. out of the city. Right here. Um, that's something that needs to be commended because he's working hard, man. So what's up? How what's are you? going on, man? I know you was it. working on that uh, on them uh, topics. Hey, you was getting it in though. I was, I was figuring it out. That was, that yeah, was I pushing was you. It out. He put me on the spot. <laughs> I had to do it for him. I can't let the youth down. So right man. there you go. Can't can't, can't, let, can't let can't let him down. So how was it for you growing up in Akron, Akron, Ohio? Man, it was it was real family oriented. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like everybody, everybody growing up have their family issues and whatnot, but one thing my family did put into me is love and loyalty and support. Um, I grew up on the east side, uh, Lover's Lane, mm -hmm. uh, Neptune Avenue, 975 Neptune Avenue was my first home ever. Talk to me. Uh, so, Talk to me. So, uh, you know, Neptune is, is always going to be in my heart. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was great. You know, like I said, it was, it was a lot of family involved. I have two brothers, two older brothers. I'm the youngest of three. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, how was youngest, that? I'm like the youngest of my entire family. Yeah. So I'm like, Everybody Did you get beat up a lot? I got I got <laughs> called names, man. I got Had but it was that tough skin. I, I got the love. Yeah. You feel me? And I got the tough love. Absolutely. But, you know, I I can't appreciate my family like enough. Yeah. I, man, we already know I wouldn't be anywhere without my people. Absolutely. You know, the morals, Absolutely. the mindset. Like I said something that sits with me big is is loyalty and, yeah. and, and love. Yeah. And that's what they put in me, bro. Absolutely. And that's what a lot of people 
lack. Yeah. Or forget about. Them. Yeah. Um, so I think I think the biggest thing that I grew up off of, even though I had to to know what reality was mm-hmm. and what goes on out here, they put that into me as well. But you know, I, I grew up in a loving environment, even though it's the city of Akron. The city of Akron is the city of Akron. You from Cleveland? You I already, am. You so, already... so so break that down for me, comparable to Cleveland. Like, what is that um, like for you? Is it is it rough? Is it is it sad? Is it a lot of Depression, what's going on? You know, every city comes with it with its ups and downs. Absolutely. Um, being from Akron, it's a it's a little city. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody kind of knows. With everybody. a lot of talent, though. It's a lot of talent. Oh my in this goodness! City. It's a lot of talent in this city. Like it's ridiculous how much talent is in this city. I could tell you, growing up in Akron, though, the the one thing you have to know growing uh-huh. up in Akron is LeBron James, obviously. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I could say, not even to sound cliche. Um, we in Akron, you can yeah, do that. Yeah, you can do that. Not, not, you you can so, do that with Brian out here, for speaking sure. Speaking on it, for sure. <laughs> speaking on it, like, Brian is something. I used to grow up reading Brian's books that he would have. Wow. So I was a diehard. Like, I, so I was influence a kid. Is real. Yeah, I was a kid, and um, our Black History Month, um, our plays, we would have Black History Month plays for, you know, African Americans that, you know, did a lot in their community and that stood out in their community. Yeah. I, I remember I was like, I think I was like six or seven, and they put me, they dressed me up completely in LeBron James costume. What? I had the artificial tattoo. <laughs> I had the, the, the white headband, the yeah, red, the red calves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had all of that. I only had like two lines or something, but I was up. There. I was LeBron that day. Absolutely. <laughs> I was LeBron. That Absolutely. Day, so, you know, he. That's somebody that really give a lot of inspiration. Uh, to the city. Just behind growing up, yeah. And as you get older, you realize what he's really doing for the city. Yeah, it's not a lot of, not a lot of people from Akron that are you know making it and and doing what he's doing. Absolutely, city, absolutely. Doing the so schools, man. It gets, everybody want to get up, get big, and go. Right. And and that that just ain't how I rock, man. Like I got too much family. I got too absolutely. much love. Too much people here, and and what he do now, man. I, it's it's only inspiration going from there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, what type of um, plans do you have? And we're gonna get to the music in one second. But what type mm-hmm. of plans do you have um, when you do uh, get to that status to uh, give back? Because I think oh, that's important. Man. It's so much that they ran through my head. Yeah, <laughs> and nothing in stone. Just yeah. something you've been just it's, you know tossing around. It's so much that they ran through my head. I know. So specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is where my, my parents live. It's a it's a enclosed like circle, kind of like a cul de sac type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but the parent where my parents live now, that house has been in my family for several several years, um, and it's a fat piece of land behind it mm-hmm. that I really want <clears throat> to have mine that I want to own. Absolutely. Um, and that doesn't just come with that land; it comes with just land in Akron. I want to be able to grab land here, yeah, so I can do. You know, things that can not only benefit the city, but benefit my people. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, there's so many ideas that I've just brainstormed. But I know for a fact I do want to get pieces of land here so I can, you know, we can do housing or something like that. Absolutely. And that's the thing about it. Brian already doing a lot of right. that. Right. You know, he set that blueprint. He's he setting a big blueprint, you know. Absolutely. Getting people homes that that don't have places to live. Yeah. Um, putting food on, on, on kids' tables in the schools that yeah. don't have school that that don't have food at home. Right. So it's just you know, a lot of the and that, that's why I talk about Brian so much because he's yeah. doing a lot of the basic things that we all should be doing. Yeah. To get to that status. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. instead of getting to that status and saying, Hey, that's where I was, I'm not going back. No, that's where I was. I'm gonna fix that. Absolutely. I'm so, going back. That's that's the biggest thing. Like it, it's it's not that I have nothing set in stone, but I definitely want to fix the city. Yeah. That's where I'm coming so from. athletics was a big influence for you. Huge. When did you start playing um, athletes? I know you had a, a short run in college. Yeah. I um I start my first sport ever was wrestling. Was it? Yeah, I was a wrestler at four years old. That was what? my first sport. My dad wasn't playing with nobody. <laughs> he, he put me and my brothers out there at four. Like I said, I'm the youngest one, so my brothers had a couple years on me. But yeah, oh, they was at, at the age Stoke of four. Coast, yeah, yeah, yeah. When look, you were choke holes in the, the middle. At the age of four, we was we was all active. Yeah. Um, it went wrestling to baseball. Yeah. Um, baseball was my really my first passion of the sport and my love. 
uh, once I got to you know the middle school and the high school age, mm-hmm. it was really um, basketball, track, and football for me. Uh, turned into football and track. Yeah. Uh, when did you start taking that seriously? So I didn't. I didn't play my first down in football until sixth grade. Wow. Yeah, it was. It That's was late for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I started at seven years old. Man, I felt like I was like I felt like I had to pick up on a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to the 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 high school level. Um, I ended up yo. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up. Um, I ended up starting varsity my sophomore year. Wow. Yeah, and I was. That we was are a good time. team. Yeah. What team, it was, it what was, team was that? Green. Green High School. Shut up, Green. Green high school. First Look, off, I got I got to think about Green. Listen. <laughs> I ain't going to do it today because the kids are around. But y'all know who y'all are. Look, Go Green ahead. High School, Green High School, it, I have a bittersweet relationship with Green High School. Yeah. Um, I love a lot of the people that I came out of that school with. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the staff that I was close with. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing about Green High School, I was the only African American man. Wow. <laughs> so how was that? How was that just... I know I was, how that feels. I was the being the only, only one in, in your class. Only I'm talking one. about I moved. I moved to Green, and this is why it's kind of weird in timeline now because Ooh. fifth grade, middle of my fifth grade year, I left the Edge Academy now in Akron, Ohio. Mm-hmm. We moved out to Green. Mm. So I'm talking about fifth grade. This is the middle of the school year. I went nobody. from nobody. You don't know nobody. Ninety percent of a class being African American to now being the only one in that classroom. Yeah. So it was kind of just like a, it's a, shock. a wake up call. Absolutely. You feel me? So, Absolutely. you know, coming from a place where I fit in, I'm now at a place where I have to figure out how to fit in, yeah. who I am, having questions, determining if I'm really who I believe I yeah. am. Like, I had a lot of self contemplation time. Like, Absolutely. Like, I had a lot of self time that I had to get right. Yeah. Um, because they put a lot of pressure on me, even being in sports. And I think sports is what made me get to that outlet because I wanted to be accepted. Yeah. Like, my pops would always tell me, you know, you're better than what they think you are. You you are worth something. You are mm-hmm. somebody. And often being the only African-American in the room, you don't always feel that. Um, yeah. Especially at a young age. Yeah. Um, you got kids that, you know, will literally say, yo, you're black. Like, yo, what is it oh, like I to know. do this? What is it? We used to have. Do you uh, know you're black? Yeah, we used to have. Wait, what? I'm talking about. I'm in sixth grade, bro. Where I'm talking about after my first year, I'm having people drive by our house throwing trash out of our, at our yard, calling us the N word. And it was a. I got I got some of my teammates talking to parents and because this is in I'm the 2000s. playing. This, this is in two thousand. This is not you know? like so. This, this is not like forty years slave ago. Time. Yeah, no, like, you feel me? So. It's just very reason. I got threw into that pit of diversity real, real fast. Yeah. Real, real quick. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I kind of, I think I handled it well. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually said it in my song, Lost, that I just dropped the video for. Big uh, Gemini. Yeah, Big Gemini. Lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Geminis out <laughs> there. It's on my arm with it. Yeah. So, in Lost, I said, um, it's a lot of y'all that I, you that I went around that mm-hmm. wasn't really accepting me. Yeah, Now y'all okay. see where I'm trying to go. Okay. Now y'all want to come around like y'all trying to act right. Yeah. So I know it's just the act, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you feel me? I know it's just the act. Yeah. Y'all acting right I see now. where you coming from you with, that, because with that line. Because these same people that's hitting me up, like, yo, your music is going somewhere. Yo, you're doing something big. Are the same people that, like I said, they're throwing trash in my yard. Right. Calling me the N-word. Wow. Literally hoping I wasn't going to make nothing of myself. Wow. Or expecting that as well. Expecting it. So it's like, I, I try so hard to, to help that humble me. Yeah. Um, because I do appreciate all the support. I do appreciate all the love, no matter who it comes from. Yeah. But I do realize, yo, y'all, wasn't, it wasn't same, always this it energy. It wasn't even. It wasn't always this energy, for sure. So the music, when did the music come around? The music came around when I, when God told me that sports wasn't for me anymore. She told me the same thing. You know, and that's the biggest thing I had to... Still like that's the biggest pill I had to swallow. Oh. Like, that was one Ooh. of the biggest pills I had to swallow. When, when, when the Lord told me, yo, you're not going anywhere with this. Mm-hmm. 
and for that to you, what type of mindset were you were you in at that time? Because I was in a dark one when yeah. I when when it happened to me. You got to think, I'm, as an athlete, we work our whole life training. I'm talking about after practice, we got to go to training. We got to we got to work. We putting in work, man. Yeah. So I think a lot of that was just running through my mind because I knew for a fact that. You know, it wasn't my talent that was going to hold me back. My problem was, you know, school. I wasn't finding myself all the time in school. Absolutely. So, I never thought it would be my talent or my body that was going to stop. Right. You know. Um, but when that, that moment came, I had already had two surgeries. Mm-hmm. Um, it took me till after my fourth surgery to really realize, like, yo, I don't even want to go to practice just to sit there. Right. I don't want to go to practice to take notes or team meetings at 8 in the morning lifts eight in the morning and I'm not doing the thing. Yeah. You know, I you feel like at this point I'm wasting money and time. Absolutely. And, and you were on scholarship. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the biggest thing about it, bro, because like you weren't no scrub. Yeah, you know like, what that's I'm that's the biggest like, thing you, about some it. Some scrubs yeah. be getting hurt and they be acting like it was the whole world was over. Like wait. Man, you I, I, I wasn't no scrub, man. And then like I said, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I was, you know, Julio on the field. But you but also play DN. Yeah, yeah, six, for sure. What, what are you, 6'2"? <laughs> I'm 6'1". 6'1"? Yeah, 6'1". Two I was what? speed rush. Two, I, at the time, I was 205. Come on now. In college, yeah, though. At the time, I was 205. DN. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a hard feat for anybody yeah. at that size. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, don't... that that I understand that. The I biggest thing that. that was holding me back was when I knew I was elite, and I'm just giving myself some flowers right Come now. on. When I knew I was elite... Um, it was my junior year going into my senior year. Mm-hmm. We did the Nike opening. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you yeah. knew about the, you know about the rating day and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. So it was the Spark Combine before. And okay. It turned into the rating day. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I went my junior year, and bro, I'm talking about the night before. I'm eating lasagna. I'm eating pizza, candy, because oh, I'm thinking I'm just about to go to this combine trial. Mm-hmm. And it's, I'm just going to be another athlete there. It's going to be over 500 athletes. Right. Here. I'm not, I'm not thinking I'm about to stand out, yeah, man. Absolutely. Man, bro, I'll tell you, that day came, and I took fourth overall out of the entire Ohio. What? In that rating. I got invited and that to took the, you. I got invited to the regionals. Um, Ohio That's State started, started yeah. uh, retweeting my name. Uh, a lot of people started. Like I said, my biggest thing was my grades. I wasn't yeah. serious with school at all. Okay. Um, so that was a big thing for me. But that's kind of when I knew, like, yo, this this sport's about to take me somewhere. Right. So like I said, when I got when I got told this shoulder came out, man, and I've only been worried about this one. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm only worried about this one right now. You telling me this one just popped out? Bro. Yeah. So that's kind of what I was dealing with in that situation. And like I said, after that series of surgeries happened, after that, kind of got to the point where I was just like, man, I want my body. I don't want to be hurt. You're only no like more. 19. Yeah. And at the time, I'm, at the time, I'm <laughs> like, you don't 18, be, 19 yeah, years old. You don't want to be broken down. At, with at three, sur- three plus surgeries yeah, already. So absolutely. Is, I got See? old people looking at me like, you got what? <laughs> right. Right. Look. Right. Yeah, I mean, so. you got such a deep story, man. Um, we definitely um, appreciate you uh, even stepping on here mm-hmm. and uh, talking to these kids. Because they might not understand everything right now, but when they start going through things, they're going to be able to tap For back sure. into this For information. Sure. Um, I want to get to some of your projects real quick, mm-hmm. and we're going to get out of here because we're going to let the kids go. For sure. For um, sure. But why do you – where did the – you just talked about athletics, mm-hmm. so you you was a hard worker. Is that where the music um, consistency comes from? I desperately needed a replacement. Okay. I desperately. I feel needed the a same way. I feel when, the same and, way. And as an athlete, I think every ex athlete can go through this. When you grow up an athlete, you get so much love and and, and attention mm-hmm. and, and and time put mm-hmm. into you that when it's done for, you like. Man, what am I supposed to do? With, with all this time. So, in my case, I was kind of, I felt like it was, I didn't feel like I stopped playing because I wanted to stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I felt like it was rudely taken from me. Absolutely. Um, and that's where a time period of, you know, low depression came in. Because yeah. I'm sitting there, can't play my sports anymore. I don't know how to play an instrument. Mm-hmm. You know, I barely you work a job because time. I'm putting most of my time yeah. in the sports. So, 
that's where the music came in for me, man. And as I see myself continually, like slowly start to progress, I was that, like, no, that I bug just, came in. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm like, you that's know that what? athletic bug. Boy. Yeah, that bug you start seeing yourself in, getting I'm better. Like, and then you start to hear people like just not even on no cockiness. You start to hear people talk about your music, and it's more positive than negative. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about people that aren't even my my friends. Yeah, you know, talking about the music. That's so when it gets real. That's when it's like. You know, maybe I got something wrong with this. I feel it. I feel the momentum. Um, I just had a lady come to me yesterday, and she told me, she said, you know what? Your energy, your aura, she said, something big is coming for you. Yeah. Like, she said, I listen to your music. I, I watch your video. She said, something's going to break through. And I don't know this lady. Like, right. you know, I, I know her. You know, it's, it's always love when I see her, but, you know, I've never been that personal with mm-hmm. her. So it's just for her to come to me and say that, Man, it just made me think. Like, shot, they, man, they seeing that work what's coming thing. next? What's coming next? It got me motivated. It got Absolutely. Me, it got me ready. Absolutely. Um, I see how a lot of other artists are, and that's one thing I try and do is be, you know, different, but similar enough to be able to collab and mm-hmm. come together relatable, and, and be right. relatable Absolutely. and whatnot. So Absolutely. I think I, my biggest goal is I want to I keep inspiring with this music. I obviously want to get to the certain, the certain point that I think we all want to get to. Mm-hmm. Um, I think right now I'm still trying to figure out what I qualify as making. Absolutely. I think that's that's the biggest thing I think a lot of people are messing their mental up with because I'm trying to figure out what is making. Like, am I am I making it by by making changes? Come on. You feel me? Am I making it by by touching? Come on. Or is it just that bread in my mind? New single lost now now come on, <laughs> come on now hold on man. You feel me? <laughs> but no like, I see where you come you feel from me? your music is so transparent and and yeah and that, um, where you at right now yeah I yeah. love that about and, your music bro. and don't get me wrong money rule the world right I I rather be I rather take the back end off a track than be famous at the absolutely end of the day. absolutely but you know it, it, it's it's what we do with it it's it's how we live our life it's how we inspire it's how we are with the you, you know, because like, like bro said, they the next people coming up. When I'm, when I'm gone, right. when I'm dead and gone, I don't want nobody to look at my content and say, oh, he was one of them. He was just another right. artist. He, right. was, he was another hip hop artist. No, mm-hmm. I want them to say he was a artist. He was an influencer. Mm-hmm. He, like, he exactly. did something for me. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm not doing nothing for nobody, I'm, I'm doing, I'm making, I'm wasting my time making Absolutely. music. And it's just, that's just how I look. If I'm not doing anything for anybody out there. And I'm wasting my time doing it. Absolutely. So to close out, um, what, is there anything you want to leave to the kids um, before we get out of here? Um, the biggest thing I have for you guys is I am somebody that has been to hell and back. I done been to hell and back. Life then thrown challenges at me that I never seen coming because I love my childhood. I always thought life would be sweet. You guys will be challenged. You guys will have obstacles that you guys will have to get over. My biggest thing is to stay strong, keep pushing, because there is always a better day ahead. Absolutely. I promise you. Absolutely. A year ago, I wouldn't have thought that. Absolutely. It's always a better day ahead, and never forget that. That's the biggest thing I have for you guys. Absolutely. So I need everybody to give it up for Just Cam. Give it up. You my camera people? We about to close out. We about to close out, camera people. All right. This is. That concludes this video. Um, did you enjoy your time here? I had a great time.
Oh, you got it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that, that'll conclude our time here. Um, did you have a good time? I had a great time. I appreciate you having me on me, though. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, make sure you subscribe and turn the post notifications on, like the video, um, comment what you thought about the video. It, it probably had a little ups and downs on it, but uh, the the editors are going to make it look great. <laughs> like nothing even happened. So give them a round of applause.